course we're doing our exercise this morning I'm Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist try-hard theologist as we do Mark 5th, chapter 15 thank you for joining me this morning things are hotting up in the Gospel of Mark um, <coughs> Jesus is well and truly now heading for the cross and it's going to get nasty this out so the first thing in the morning after everything that's taken place up to this point the chief priests came to Christ and bound him first thing in the morning they bound him They'd finally gotten him in their grip. They'd finally gotten the Lord bound and on their way to the Pharisees' opinions about him. So the chief priests led Christ bound to Pilate and Pilate was concerned about the situation and he asked Christ can't you see the accusations that these religious people of yours have against you Now at this time of the year, it was a custom for the Jewish people, no, for the government to release one person back to them. And unfortunately, the religious people chose Barabbas to be that person. Um, yeah, Barabbas. But Pilate asked them, me to release to them the king of the Jews. And unfortunately the religious people chose a, a rebel called Barabbas. So Pilate released them to them. to the Jewish people Barabbas but the funny part about it was Pilate knew that they brought Christ to him only out of envy there wasn't a legitimate reason for the Pharisees to have brought Christ to Pilate it was all for legitimate illegitimate reason Now, the chief priests were determined because, in actual fact, they stirred—excuse me—they stirred up the crowd so that Pilate would release 
Barabbas to them. Now, they didn't like Barabbas, the chief priest, because he was a rebel of a man. Horrible man. Very destructive. Um, nevertheless, now Pilate addressed Jesus to the Pharisees as the king of the Jews. And he tried everything he could to get Christ off the hook. But the harder he tried, the harder it seemed to become, the more determined they were to have Christ crucified. And they kept crying out, crucify him. Now this is typical of the determination of religious people. And this was part of God's plan to make sure that once Christ was headed for the cross, there was no way in which the Pharisees would back down. And that's why religious evil provoked by the Mosaic law will even go as far as crucifying its creator. Now when you think about, look, you really don't even need to think about it. How terrible and traumatic is that? How horrible is that? that the law that was given to show man moral by God enabled man to put God on a cross. The evil that it constructed and empowered inside the heart of those under it was so powerful that it influenced those under it to put the giver of the law on a cross. Now this helps us to comprehend that our carnal nature is real. Paul was right when he said that the best it can do is produce sin, death and evil and this is the the most graphic instance of how the law, the law, the mosaic law sent man in a rage of evil Pilate tried everything he could to get Christ off the, the hook. He even went as far as saying, why? What evil has this man done? What has he done to you to cause you to want to do this to him? But no. Nah. This is how the law of Moses works. It's determined in its ability to cause humanity to harm itself, to turn on itself. And it's a shame because Paul said, is it, is it the law that's the problem? No, the law is holy, just and good. And the sad part about it is that is and there's only one other answer and that is that we are the problem and it's difficult to come to that place where we'll admit within ourselves that we have a sinful nature and then that and that and that that is the reason why 
6.14 says the sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace so sin has dominion over us it gets its power over us its influence becomes greater than us when we are under the law and so again I have to say when Christ was crucified that exemplified how evil the law can make us could they cried out all the more crucify him crucify him and once the law gets its gets its claws in as it were yeah dr jason morrison theologist again i just want to say thank you for watching the videos and i uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it if you watched it on youtube please share or like um, maybe even comment if you watch it on facebook like comment share um, but most of all get out and live this isn't a rehearsal you've got a one of life don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.